good morning to everyone and welcome to this uh, interesting and important uh, session on power systems in general and power transformers in particular uh, dealing with uh, components and systems across power systems both in india as well as in other countries one topic that has often come up for discussion especially with some of the young engineers is power transformers so to this extent uh, the next 45 minutes or so we would like to touch upon some of the very important topics that budding engineers should know and understand uh, the fundamentals of uh, application and design a little bit of uh, varieties of power transformers where we are heading and what are all the uh, career opportunities available and what are all the interesting things that are developing especially in case you are getting into uh, research and other activities there are quite a few things that are happening especially with the onset of smartness in the power system as a whole uh, including information technology communication technology once again i would say that the power system has become more fashionable to pursue as a career and uh, a lot of opportunities are opening up and so i welcome you all to get into this important uh, development in power system as a whole so the first link as i was mentioning is the power on summer so to get into the details let us uh, try to recapitulate what we know already possibly most of you have gone through the fundamentals of power system courses in your respective uh, colleges or a little bit on the um, specialization you might have done doesn't matter so let me take the next few minutes explaining what we are talking about uh, in this session the power system as we all know it is actually comprising of multiple uh, areas the first and foremost is the generation which is shown on the leftmost uh, portion of this uh, diagram the power plant is one important element wherein possibly we burn coal or fossil fuel that is the uh, little bit uh, common thing which we do but it's getting old fashioned uh, because we have more and more power plants coming up through wind energy and solar energy of course nuclear is also an important element in some countries nuclear power is one uh, important major component and uh, this power generation is normally done at medium voltage levels uh, let's say voltage like 6.6 kv 11 kv 25 kv those are all the voltage levels and once you generate this voltage you have to transmit this power across large distances to a major city or consumption center so this voltage is typically stepped up to a uh, level like 400 kv or 765 kv in india and uh, other voltages in other countries too so the question is why should you step up that is a fundamental question which we all possibly know but again once again at the cost of repetition i may want to touch upon this for those of you who may want to get a brief idea about what it is we all know that the power uh, in electrical parlance is nothing but voltage multiplied by current vi p equal to v into i the power generated cannot be technically destroyed so easily like uh, you can say some of it gets dissipated in heat and other things but the major bulk power you want to transmit from one end to the other so the two parameters which we can manipulate are the voltage and current so in case you want to send the current through a large distance there is always a loss we call it as i squared or loss r is the resistance along the path and i is the current we want to transmit as you know the equation is not linear it is uh, uh, exponentially proportional to the square of the current so if you want to have pump power if you need to worry about the losses so if you can reduce the current even by half that means you are going to reduce the power loss by a quarter to a quarter in case you are able to reduce the current by 1000 times let us say you are going to reduce the losses by a million times so it makes sense sometimes to step up the voltage say 1000 times more and so reduce the losses a million times along the way that is a fundamental reason why we need to step up the voltage through a device called transformer i think that's the fundamental reason why we have the transformer in picture and similarly once you transmit and receive the power at the load center typically a city or a major industry this voltage has to be again stepped down to a voltage which you can handle let's say we are talking about 240 volt single phase in our households and 14 volt three phase or 6.6 kv 11 kv in industrial systems so again we need to have a transformer which is uh, stepping down a high voltage to a lower voltage let's also use the term step up typically is used for transformer when stepping up voltage it technically also steps down the current similarly a step down transformer though it steps down the voltage it is actually stepping up or 
increasing the current. So that's a fundamental thing which you'll see in the next few slides now. Uh, to touch upon a little bit on the history, which is which could be very interesting for all of us to know, there were two doyens of uh, power in the early part of 20th century when electrical power was uh, getting developed. There was one gentleman by name Edison, I'm sure most of you know. He was uh, behind many inventions, uh, the most important being the electric bulb we all know, but now that's also getting out of fashion. That's a different matter. But Edison is known mainly for uh, many, uh, though he is known for many inventions, but electric bulb was one of them. So he was a proponent of generating, transmitting the electrical power through direct current. And then he had a competition through another person by name, Tesla. You may all know that Tesla name is very familiar with respect to the cars being manufactured today, electric vehicle, and it's going to be introduced in India too. But all the same, Tesla is one of the most major inventor of electrical power devices in the early part of 20th century. And he was a major proponent of AC. And there was a major uh, conflict of interest, you may use that word, but basically there was a lot of competition between the AC transmission system and DC transmission system. And eventually the world mostly adapted the AC transmission system for bulk power transmission, as we all know, three-phase AC power system, as we know of it, and Tesla was the man behind it. And one important element that made it possible was the transformer. That is the reason why transformer is one of the major components that we all should understand uh, further to pursue this uh, business of electrical power. It is actually a very simple device. So if you really understand a few things about transformer, uh, you are done. So I don't see it's a major problem to understand, but let us quickly step through a few things. It is highly economical device. It's a static device mostly, and it's a highly reliable device. And a typical lifetime of a transformer could be about 50 years and so and uh, it causes possibly the, one of the most minimum losses in a power system. Now, uh, if you look at the picture on the right, you would see that this transformer typically has uh, two sides of it. One is called possibly a high voltage side and the other one is called a low voltage side. Uh, I have indicated with surfaces one and two, you see a large bushing. Uh, I don't want to get into the detail of what a bushing is, but bushing is basically the uh, tab through which you take the current or voltage out of the transformer and into the transformer. So typically in a transformer, you have two bushings. Here I have represented as V1 and V2, let us say. One is big and large and the other one is small. Wherever you have a large bushing, the conductor connected to it is small. And similarly, the smaller bushing will have a conductor which is very thick. Why? Because we all know that a transformer Though it steps up the voltage or steps down the voltage or current, whatever way you look at it, it cannot step up or step down power. Power is technically, you know, uh, when you multiply by time, it becomes energy. Energy is indestructible. To an extent, yes, there are losses, but let us ignore the losses in the transformer for the time being. We are talking about bulk power transmission with losses less than half a percent, one percent in a power transformer. By and large, what it means is that that power that you measure on one side of the transformer is more or less equal to the power on the other side. In other words, in this particular transformer, you can see at the bottom most, which I want you to remember, V1, I1. That is the high voltage side voltage, which is written in bold and big V1, multiplied by the current on that side, which is typically small. I have written in small letters I1, which is equivalent to the other side voltage, which is small, and current, which is large. So this is a very simple equation, which I'm sure is very easy to digest, even for those who are not pursuing electrical power. This is a fundamental equation with which you go about. So in, in short, a transformer steps down or step up the voltage, and conversely, it steps down or steps up, step up the current. So this is the fundamental uh, first uh, understanding we must have about a transformer. So. As I mentioned earlier, uh, once again, I would repeat that a transformer would typically have two connections. A single phase transformer is what we are talking about here, possibly uh, in case I didn't mention it earlier. Uh, the two bushings are V1 and V2, and current conductors are I1 and I2. And I can, you can see from the thickness that the one side current is smaller and the other side is smaller. Now, uh, coming to a three phase transformer, yes, we all have three phase system. Uh, for reasons which are very uh, interesting to know in case you didn't know, but we don't have that as the focus area today. So a three-phase transformer typically will have as if there are three transformers clubbed into one. 
So naturally, you'll have three bushings, HV bushings. Uh, let's say V1 will be typically, let us say we call the phases as RYV. It would be three bushings on the high voltage side and three bushings on the low voltage side. So this is a classical uh, diagram, which I'm sure all of you are uh, possibly have seen, but I'm just trying to include it here. As I said, this, this is not an academic session to go so much into details, but it is all the same, very important to uh, at least remember this particular diagram. So a transformer comprises of uh, basically a magnetic core uh, we through which a magnetic flux flows through. So typically, if we represent instead of one and two here in this picture, I'm sorry, it is written as primary and secondary. P and S are the suffixes we have used here. So IP into VP equals IS into VS. And they are coupled magnetically. There is no direct electrical connection between the primary winding and secondary winding. So your transformer is a device. It not only steps up the voltage or steps down the voltage, but also electrically isolate one system from the other what we call as a galvanic separation between two electrical systems. This could be very important for some applications. This is uh, another important element of a transformer. So let us get a overview of how this transformer fits into a power system, which is more important for practical knowledge of how and where the transformer is applied in a power system. To make things easier to understand and comprehend and make some very quick mental calculations, you don't need a calculator to do a few very quick calculations we'll do just for understanding purposes. So we, here we have a grid system shown in cloud, right? So it could be a very big system of a country or a state or whatever. Let us say we have a connection. I'm talking about again, single phase to make things very, very simple for us to understand. So there is a main bus we call, it will nomenclature, now you have given a nomenclature as main bus, which is a hundred kilo volt, uh, high voltage system, single phase. And we have the transformer, uh, this is the typical symbol we use for transformer with two circles. One is for the high voltage winding, one is for the low voltage winding, blue and red, uh, to distinguish between the two voltage levels. This is a very typical, what we call as a single end diagram, right, of a power system. So from the high voltage 100 kV, we use a transformer, which is rated for 100 kV on the high voltage side and 5 kV on the low voltage side. And this gets connected to the bus system, which is typically a switch gear, which is rated for 5 kV. So this transformer interconnects two power systems, 100 kV on one side, 5 kV on the other side, with a particular ratio, 100 stroke 5, which is around 20, which is also the ratio of the transformer we will define. And it is rated for 100 MVA. As you know, when you have the rated voltage and you have the rated MVA, you can easily calculate the current, which is what we'll try to attempt in the next slide. So this is a very simple thing. And then there's another thing called impedance. These three are the most important parameters we need to know or use in a real power system. Other things are all important, but not so important as these three uh, technical specifications of a transformer. So MBA rating, HV side, LV side, voltage ratings, and the impedance. These three are, once again, I would request you to remember the most important parameters of a transformer. So once you have this embedded in a uh, system, uh, we have small squares here, which represent the breaker. It is like our MCBs in a house, but when you use it in a very big power system, we have protection system, which is connected to what we call as current transformer, which measures the current, which could be used for metering or billing purposes. Also, they are used for protecting the transformer against overload or short circuits. And so we typically have one breaker on the high voltage side, one breaker on the low voltage side, and we also have current transformers on the high voltage side as well as on the low voltage side. And these current transformers, they convert a very high level currents in the primary system of the 100 kV or 5 kV, which are too difficult for you to access and approach. They step down these currents into a smaller levels like one ampere or five ampere, which you could possibly measure through your ammeter or your energy meters or in your protection devices. So this constitutes how the transformer is embedded into an overall power system, which is always coupled with breaker on the high voltage side, breaker on the low voltage side and current transformers. And sometimes we may also have what we call as potential transformers, which step down the system voltage to a lower voltage level for taking building and other purposes, voltage measurement purposes, which is not shown for clarity in this picture. So this is how it is embedded. So once you step down the voltage from 100 kV to 5 kV, 
the distribution takes place where we have again multiple breakers and current transformers feeding individual loads like an industry or a small area in a city at 11 kV or 5 kV and then it's again stepped down to a 15 volt or 240 volt which we use in the house which is not shown in this picture for clarity. So by and large to summarize we have a grid system and which is at a high voltage level and we have typically a step down transformer which steps down from 100 kV to 20 kV and then we have breakers, current transformers, and a distribution system. So this is in a just how a transformer is embedded into a real power system. Moving over, let us look at, uh, uh, to understand this, how this transformer is fitted into an overall power system, very quick review of what we need to know about power, uh, the transformer is shown here. So here we have a primary uh, represented as VP and IP, the voltage and currents are represented as VP and IP, and on the secondary side, they are represented as V secondary and I secondary. The ratio between VP and VS is nothing but the turns ratio. The number of turns on the primary side is NP and the turns on the secondary is NS. So NP divided by NS is nothing but the ratio A, which is A is to one is represented here for clarity. And the load is connected on the secondary side, which is represented as ZL. It could be purely resistive sometimes like lighting load, which you could possibly write as RL but invariably the secondary side of the transformer is connected to not just lighting loads, but also a number of induction motors and other inductive devices. So it is represented as RL plus XL. So to put together, it is called ZL. Now, coming back to this right side of the slide, we have the voltages and currents I have defined and number of turns is defined. Just, just for you to recapitulate whatever I have been mentioning with respect to the diagram, they are represented here. I hope uh, this picture is very clear, except that here I have taken a small liberty of converting it uh, A into N here. N is the number of ratio, number of turns ratio. So I may need to correct this diagram later, but right now let us take this number N as the ratio between the primary and secondary turns, which is also the uh, primary voltage to secondary ratio. Watch out here. This is secondary current by primary current against the primary voltage to secondary voltage ratio. For you know the reason now, correct? Because of this VP and IP equal to VS by IS, the ratio VP by IS by VP by VS is inversely proportional to or inversely equivalent to IS by IP. Now, coming back to this uh, power of the transformer, I mentioned it is VP primary voltage multiplied by the secondary I mean, primary current, which is also equivalent to secondary voltage multiplied by secondary current. It can be often represented in KVA because when you talk about the power levels, the VA levels become very, very small for us to represent. So practical power transformers are rated in KVA, thousands of VA or MVA, which is 10 to the power six of VA. And voltage is often represented in kilovolt, right? You might be aware that the power, the distribution power happens at 11 kV, which is step down to 415 volt. So typically a distribution transformer may be represented in KVA, which means it is kilovolt primary multiplied by current primary, which is a very simple way of representing. So K and K on both sides are very, very important to keep here. And uh, in case of major power, bulk power transmission, KVA is not sufficient. Still, we have so many zeros to be added for very big transformer. So we end up with representing the power as MBA, which is nothing but kilo volt power and I primary divided by another thousand has to be introduced here. Or it can be also represented as kilovolt secondary current divided by thousand. So this is another, these two are two more formulae I want you to uh, keep in mind. So let us do a very quick, uh, I would say thumb rule calculation, right? Very simple calculation. So in case we are talking about a single phase transformer, which is 10 MA rating, kilovolt primary is 100 kV. The turns ratio is 20. So you can quickly calculate what is the primary current secondary voltage and secondary current. You need to use the formula I used just to give you a hint. Let me go ahead. The solution is we need to remember this formula, MVA equivalent to kilovolt and current multiplied by 1000. So just substitute the values. So 10 is the number we have used here. MVA is 10 multiplied by 100 times, which is the kilovolt peak IP. So from which you can calculate IP. Right, so it is very simple. 100 ampere multiplied by 10 kV will give you 10 MA. 
And similarly, the other values can also be figured out. I'm not here to get into the details, but these are all things which you need to do very often in a real power system, a real application, wherever you are. So just substitute back, substitute some of these values, you would get the other values. So you need to manipulate either this power equation or the turns equation, right? So going back to the circuit again, we need to define the load impedance. So we all know that the impedance is nothing but voltage by current, basic Ohm's law equation we all know. So the secondary impedance equals the V voltage, V secondary by I secondary. And similarly, with respect to the primary, we all know that VP by IP would give you the primary impedance. And now substituting the values of primary with respect to the secondary, you know, the Vs by VP is equal to N and Is by IN equal to one by N. So you substitute all this. So you can directly calculate the primary impedance in terms of the load impedance. So in case you have a step down transformer, 10 times it steps down, let us say, and in case the secondary one is one ohm, and so 10 square is the number here, so it becomes 100 times more. I don't want to get into so much detail about this particular diagram, given the small uh, duration of our uh, discussion here. But just to give you an idea, any transformer, as I was mentioning, has a primary winding, secondary winding, right? And then when it comes to real power flow, in the very beginning of the talk, I mentioned that you need to ignore the losses, but there are losses all said and done. So the losses are caused by the winding resistance on the primary side and the winding resistance on the secondary side. Here we have conveniently shifted some of the secondary resistance and uh, inductance onto the primary side. We will not worry about it for the time being. The idea is not to discuss so much, but you can see that there is a figure A square, which is the ratio square, which is translated from the secondary to the primary as explained in the previous diagram. So when you inject current through this, this resistances will cause some losses. So that is copper losses we call. And then there is also a resistance here, which represents the magnetic losses, which could be categorized into multiple things, including eddy current losses and hysteresis losses and all that. What is important from system perspective are two other important elements here. One is the primary leakage reactants and secondary leakage reactants, and also the magnetizing reactants. So these three reactances are very, very important. What are they? Whenever you make a real power transformer, whatever you do, the primary windings are not necessarily coupled fully to the secondary winding. There's always some amount of magnetic flux, which is linked only with the primary winding or with the secondary winding. They in a way represent pure inductance. They are not part of the transformation that is going on inside the transformer. And when you try to inject current through those leakage inductances, they will cause a certain amount of voltage drop. And that is nothing but a leakage drop across the transformer We'll talk about it in the next slide. And also, even if you don't have any load connected, there's a small magnetizing current which will flow through the transformer, which is sufficient to excite the transformer with a particular magnetic field. So that is represented by Xm. As you know, this Xm as a value would be very, very high because the current drawn from the system and the transformer is simply energized would be a small percentage. This is something very important for engineers who are practicing power system to know. Suppose the rated current is 100 ampere, the exiting current would be less than 5 amperes, right? 5% or 3% or even 1%, depending on the design. And uh, the losses would be a very, very small percentage, 0.5% or so. These numbers are very important for you to know. That's the reason I am possibly repeating some of them again and again. Anyway, this diagram represents whatever I was mentioning about. The idea is not to go through it again. So R is resistance, X is inductance, and P suffices for primary and secondary side. Core is typically represented as RC, the core resistance. M is the magnetizing reactance. And uh, in practical world, the resistance is very, very small compared to the leakage reactances here on the series path. On the shunt path, RC and XM are very, very high, right? As a magnitude as compared to RP and XP. So, in a way, we ignore all the parameters except this XP and XS. The primary and secondary leakage reactances are two most important elements if you want to really apply 
the transformer in the power system, not as a product, but as part of a link in the power system. So the transformer impedance, as I was mentioning, the third important parameter I was mentioning about is basically the primary leakage reactance and the secondary leakage reactance connected in series. So that is a transformer impedance. And this transformer impedance is often expressed as a percentage of the load impedance. This is very, very interesting and important. Again, the typical values are 10% for power transformers and 5% for distribution transformers. We'll see why it is like this roughly. So when you say power transformers, we are typically talking about 5 MEA and above, right? So this is some important uh, demarcation between these two categorization, which is also very, very important from practical aspects. So the power transformers are used for bulk power transmission and generation and all that. And distribution transformer is invariably used for the transformers which we see on the roadsides in cities for stepping down 11 kV to 15 volt, sometimes even to 240 volt. And today distribution transformers are also used to integrate the renewable energy distributed generation, like your rooftop and small wind power generation back into the grid. So that's the time in views. And this distribution transformers have a lower impedance. The reason is the impedance as I was representing actually represents the uh, voltage drop. So the distribution said you want to keep the voltage drop to the minimum. We tackle it with a very low uh, impedance. Whereas in the power transformers, you will see in the next few slides, though the impedance is very high, it actually helps. You will be surprised to know that higher impedance means the lower short circuit through fault current through the transformer. So this is a very, very important aspect. And so we keep it little high and we compensate for this higher value by what we call as the tap changes on the transformer. So higher the impedance, typically the tap ranges are also higher, proportionately higher to compensate for the voltage changes. So we in a way compensate for that. So there's no major issue in the real power system. So in a way, I have a very quick calculation here. 
So here we have a grid system, back to the grid system, the transformer and all that. So the grid system is supposed to be infinite uh, because the transformer ratings are small compared to the grid system. So let us ignore the impedance of the grid system. So in case somebody says that my transformer impedance is 10%, then if you have a fault on the secondary side, right? If you have a fault on the secondary side, the current through the transformer would be 10 times more. One by 10% is 10 times, right? So it is very simple. In, in other words, through a power transformer with 10% impedance, the maximum fault current that can flow through the transformer is about 10 times. So this is something I wanted to remember. It is not going to be 100 times the load current. It's not going to be half the load current. Typically, it's around 10 times. Similarly, in case of a distribution transformer, the through fault current through the transformer would be around 20 times. You know why? It is because the impedance is around 5%. So 1 by 5% gives you 20 times the rated current. The transformers also differ with respect to the way they are constructed. There are two basic constructions. One is core type and shell type. As you can see, the core type transformers, the windings are possibly on uh, distributed on two limbs and a single phase transformer context. And in case of shell type, the, the windings are around one particular limb and the magnetic flux goes through the other two limbs here. And so it is more a kind of a compact design. The copper is less in this, but here maybe the iron is less. So it's a compromise. There are some operational advantages and uh, design advantages and disadvantages in each. But I would say most of the major power transformers, they are all core type, but possibly smaller and distribution types are all shell type. Some of the old power transformers used to be shell type, but I would say today, most of the major power transformers we use core type. And you can see here one simple thing here, three phase transformer where you have R, Y, B link, there is no return magnetic core. Why? Because typically the three phases you know, the current or voltage or flux add up to zero under normal operating conditions. So there's no need for a return limb here for the magnetic flux to go through. At any one point, the flux produced by one particular phase gets returned in the other two phases. Whereas you see in the shell type, uh, whether you have a uh, single phase or three phase, there is always a, a return core. So that makes it possibly more expensive for major uh, power transformer designs. So this is another important element you may want to know. The other important thing we need to know about is the transformer polarity. What is polarity? There's another interesting uh, element we need to understand. We all know that you have polarity for the batteries, right? You have a cell at home, 1.5 volt cell you buy from a shop, it is marked always with positive and negative, right? That is very clear. When it comes to the AC power system, we all know that the voltages and currents, they flow back and forth every uh, second 50 times that is the frequency in this country it could be 60 hertz in some other country they keep flowing back and forth so what is the polarity that is something very interesting question right sometimes it is positive sometimes it's negative so what is polarity in, with respect to an ac winding what is important here is that it is not absolute polarity but it is about relative polarity between relative voltage between two separate windings in a transformer that is where the polarity assumes importance let us say you have, uh, for to just to understand this point, let us assume you have two batteries, 120 volt, positive and positive and negative and negative are connected together like this, and you have connected a voltmeter. By basic Kitschow's voltage law, you would know that this voltage is zero, because if you go around the loop, this is plus 120 and minus 120, so the voltmeter reading is zero. Suppose we had reversed the polarity of one of the batteries, now, if you go around this circuit, this is 120 plus 120 becomes 240 volt. So you will measure 240 volt uh, across the voltmeter here. The same thing we try to do with the Thompson winding. Here, again, we go to that one and two notation. Uh, here, we, like, but the difference is this is the two ends of a winding. So we normally mark the two ends of the winding either as one or two or S1, S2, you know, H1, X2, like that, depending on the voltage and other things. So here we have taken two windings in the same transformer, 120 volt winding, 24 volt winding. Naturally, the ratio of the transformer is five. Now, this H1 and X1 are very, very important to mark on the transformer when you manufacture. What it means is that when you apply positive voltage to H1, that is half a cycle, when you apply H1 positive half a cycle for 10 milliseconds, 
the voltage that is produced at X1 is also positive. So this H1 and X1 in a way represent that they are in sync, right? So when you apply 120 volt positive H1, negative H2, you will generate 24 volt X1 positive and X2 negative. That is what polarity is all about. When you apply negative here, X1 will also go negative. Nothing more, nothing less. So now, if you connected the voltmeter, similar to the way we connected to the battery, instead of measuring a steady voltage of whatever here, the only difference here is that these two voltages between the primary and secondary would either add up or subtract depending on the polarity. So in this particular example, we have applied 120 volt positive at an instant, let us say. I mean, it's, it's uh, continuously varying, I recognize that. At any one point of time, let us assume that H1 is positive with respect to H2. That means X1 is positive with respect to X2. So when you go around this circuit, you will recognize that this voltage and this voltage are opposing each other within this circuit. So you end up having 96 volts. So now we understand. Suppose somebody reversed the two polarities here and connected the voltmeter the other way, you would recognize that it's like H1 is positive here, X2 is negative. So when you put positive, negative, negative, positive, they all add up to 140 volt, which is nothing but 120 to 24 volt. So this is an important uh, thing we need to recognize and remember that though transformers are alternating current devices, any AC machine for that matter, there is a thing called polarity. And polarity is about getting a particular voltage output corresponding to one winding with respect to another winding. So it is not about with respect to whether it is positive or negative, what this voltage is with respect to the other winding. So that is what polarity is all about in a transformer winding. Why this is important? It is very, very important in a three-phase system. Because in a three-phase system, instead of positive or negative, we all know that the voltages and currents, for that matter, they swing with respect to each other with a, with, at 120-degree electrical angle. Or let's say in a 50-hertz system, it is 8.33 millisecond. In other words, if R phase goes positive 120 volt at a particular point, the Y phase voltage would also be the same value after 8.33 millisecond and so on and so forth. So now, in a three-phase transformer, which is nothing but a combination of three transformers put together, we have a problem here. In the sense, these three windings can be connected either in what we call as delta, means this starting of the one winding can be connected to the beginning of the other and so on and so forth and form a loop. And we bring out three wires here called delta or alternatively, this is very simple to explain. R phase, Y phase, B phase, they remain as it is. There's a dot here. i sorry, there's a mistake here. R, Y, B, and the neutrals are all connected together. So that's called Y. So in any three phase winding, I have a choice. It can be connected in star or delta. So technically a three phase transformer can be star, 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 delta, delta, star, delta, delta. So all these combinations are possible. Each combination has different application and usage in a real power system. As you all know, in the distribution level, uh, typically in our systems and in our cities and uh, industries, when you're drawing power from, uh, let's say the SCOMs, let's say typically BESCOM or Data Power, DDL in Delhi, the 11 kV side is typically connected in delta and uh, the load side is typically connected in star. And in case of a step up transformer, delta is on the generator side, star is on the high voltage side. And we'll also talk about other types of transformers very shortly. Now, you might always also wonder, maybe when you started this uh, electrical course, why this three phase system, we always have root three as phase to phase voltage. Let us say you have a 400 kV system, practicing engineer would say it's a 400 kV system. 400 kV is across phases. It is not between phase and neutral. The explanation could be this. I'm not saying this is the only explanation, but this could be one of the explanation I would normally explain to students. You know, when you talk about uh, three phase transformer, the total MVA is the sum of all the three individual phases, right? So the three phase transformer is actually, because we have now talked about Three transformers, three into V i, V into I is the normal formula you would like to use. But because of this root three factor, the KV has already built in one root three factor. When you say primary voltage is phase to phase voltage, so you need to put one more root three here to account for the three factor. So root three into root three into phase to neutral into IP is the net MEA. So this is the typical formula we are all aware that uh, root three V i is what we call as three phase system MEA. Now look at the impedance. The impedance is typically the phase neutral voltage by phase current 
which is nothing but, as you can see, it, it comes to the voltage squared by VA. Or in other words, in practical world, we use this very simple thumb rule that the load impedance of any transformer is KV squared upon MVA. So this is a very, very simple thing we use. And uh, moving further, I've given some simple examples of how power transformers are used. What are all the voltage levels? What are all the MVA? It's all massive. It needs maybe a hundred truck to move a major power transformer from one location to the other. I don't have a picture to share, but you can always see. And it's a huge factory that we have across the world, various companies manufacturing these transformers. It's a very exciting field. And uh, the distribution transformer factory can be very small. It's not a big deal. It's a, typically a medium scale industry in India. There are thousands of manufacturers uh, manufacturing the distribution transformers. So here are some examples. So the power transformer would typically have uh, the bushings and all you can see. And then there's also a conservator. We'll talk about it. A distribution transformer is small in size, which is typically mounted on a port on the roadside. And I was mentioning about changing the tab based on the impedance. Here it is. And so here there are multiple tabs. We change the transformer ratio by changing the tabs here. And this is one important uh, element in most of the power transformers. And it is also the weakest link. Uh, maybe 50% of the transformers, they fail because of some problem with this mechanism here. And here is a nameplate uh, where you have all the details of a transformer, but you would see that the most important things what you have represented here are the voltage levels and MVA or KVA in this case. Here is a nice picture of a transformer. So I'll just run through this list. So we have the tank, which is a big tank wherein it is oil fill. You need to keep the insulation level so that there is no flashover across two terms of the same winding or between the primary and the secondary or between the winding and the so this is the most important insulating medium in cast and other kind of insulating material are also used but in a major power transformer this is the norm so we have the tank we have the high voltage bushing low voltage bushing this is the conservator wherein oil is filled and it is connected to the transformer oil and there's air on top why because when you have the transformer loaded, it gets heated up or during temperature, atmospheric conditions, the oil expands because of temperature. So that has to be allowed to expand and contract without getting itself exposed to the atmosphere. The oil is one important element. And once it gets exposed to moisture, it loses its insulating property. So this is a very, very important thing to maintain isolation. And there's also what we call as a breather, which takes out the moisture in this air, which is trapped here, and that takes out the moisture in the oil. And then there are multiple things, including tap changer and uh, you know bushing, current transformers, everything is shown in this picture. So this is a picture of a simple oil-filled transformer and a dry tech transformer. So you can see that there's no oil here. So it is very safe. Oil can catch fire. And so typically it is not used within a building. We don't use an oil type transformer. So in case you need to put a transformer underneath your building, then typically dry tech transformers are used. Or in case of mines and other places, typically dry types is used. And typically we have also protection, as I was mentioning, there is a current transformer breaker and they act in tandem together along with measuring the current and voltage in the transformer and trip it. So there are some important protections which I have listed, differential, or current, book holes. What is book holes? I'll just step back here. So there's a device here, important device called book holes. What it does, when there is a fault within the transformer, it generates explosively sometimes the gas, the, the, because the arc generates so much of heat, instantly vaporizes the oil around it. It produces gas. The gas rushes through the uh, device here, which can immediately make a contact close. So it was invented by a guy called Bukos in Germany long back. So it's called uh, Bukos protection. So in addition to measuring current voltage Bukos, and also we measure the winding and oil temperature in case of overload or some other reasons, you may be able to detect uh, overload in the transformer and pressure relief in case the pressure builds up beyond the braking capacity of the transformer tank, then also we could possibly uh, trip the transformer before any major explosion occurs. So this is a typical protection device, which is nothing but what we call as today a numerical protection delay. It converts the incoming current and voltage into uh, numerical numbers and it processes the protection. So what is new today in the transformer field? Uh, we have what we call as digital transformer. It is not that it is totally digital. Uh, there are digital elements like I would say, you know, digitalization is one important element and we put continuous monitoring 
so that uh, we can define the decide the condition of the transformer we can predict the life and we can even predict whether there is going to be a failure because transformers are very very important for running a process plant and we need to predict something failure prior to that happens and we also have special robotics and there are a lot of protection algorithms and all that they are all going on and new fire resistant insulating material ester oil is another a uh, new material it's not very new but there are a lot of developments that are taking place also it is important to mention at this juncture that there are special transformers hvdc rectifier inverters fax applications so there are a lot of uh, important calculations and developments r and d areas that are happening in the transformers operation maintenance as i mentioned in the very beginning uh, we have about 50 years but the people at field have to do quite a few periodic check and maintenance to make the transformer alive and kicking throughout its lifetime it is typical to the way we maintain your car or bike or scooter so there are very clear uh, periodic maintenance schedules that have to be maintained and who are all the important users in this country in case you are from india yes you might be already familiar with these names and some of the manufacturers uh, you know all the important multinationals are already there uh, for big power transformers but there are very few I'm sorry, I left out our in Indian manufacturer, uh, Crompton Gives here. I will add it later. That's an indigenous manufacturing company. But then, when it comes to the smaller transformers, there are thousands, as I mentioned. So I have not, I have not really attempted to dis all the smaller guys here. And uh, before you decide to use the transformer, it is tested, right? So there are various standards and uh, routines test as well as type test. Type test is to design. verification so any new major power transformer has to be type tested and there are internationally accredited organizations which do this type test in india and overseas so without type test the transformer whatever you manufacture is not accepted by a customer and before you accept a transformer maybe uh, you suppose you order 30 transformers one transformer is type tested so all the 30 have to be routine tested in the factory before you you clearance for it to be dispatched so these are all some of the standards uh, including indian standards and international standards which are very very important from uh, coming to an agreement bef between a purchaser and a user and also for a maintenance agency and naturally the type tests are pretty expensive they would form a significant percentage of the transformer cost itself so typically we don't do type tests very often maybe once in a five year on a particular design is uh, normally specified by a customer Uh, this is a very important uh, slide uh, most of you might be wondering what you do in case uh, you want to pursue a career on uh, uh, transformers so you could be into design i not really mentioned about operation maintenance here that could be multiples of companies in uh, utilities and other uses so i have not really talked about it much here but very aspiring guys who possibly want to either design or research or development so most of the manufacturing companies have a design wing or and d wing and most of the utilities have uh, latest technology adaptation and academic institutions also do a lot of research on institutions in case you want to pursue your interest in uh, transformers so uh, when it comes to the positions you have in the marketing position you have sales of course and then product management so you want the profitability of your product you need to have the bridge between a market what it needs and the technology you need to tell the internal design or r&d people so there is another uh, career path that you may want to choose or business development which is somewhat like not direct sales you don't uh, clinch a deal but you make presentation and technical discussions with the customer before the customer specifies a particular product and of course consultant i started my career in tata consulting engineers long back so so consulting engineers there are multiple paths available but i would say in general uh, when you are an electrical engineer uh, sky is the limit and transformer is one, one important element i don't say you should pursue a career only in transformer but i would say whichever path you choose in electrical power system uh, as a whole the essential knowledge you must have is on transformers other things can follow 